Hello class, welcome to B-Grade Economics. This is Nate, your class leader. Let's get started. So today it marks the end of our first trade. Uh, we closed our final position this morning automatically on our QQQ ETF for the NASDAQ 100 call options. Uh, we performed a 100% gain, making it to a $2,000 mark. So trade one is complete. We have gotten off of our start point and we are moving along. You can see uh, the positions we closed were uh, two positions. I bought two call options that had different time frames because there was limited amounts in the account. And this is one of the things you'll encounter if you work with really small uh, account sizes is that call options get expensive rather quickly. Um, and then your ability to build heavy positions or leverage positions uh, or to hedge your position is very hard. Um, so when you have less money, you can take a little more risk, uh, but you're also kind of forced to because you can't make a more advanced portfolio choice. So we went with simple call options and we had to adjust them for time. Uh, we went from $1,078 to $1,998. Uh, so we made an approximate 96% uh, increase. That is excellent return in a, I want to say it was a 7 uh, trading day span. So that is uh, is pretty great. Um, now, obviously we took on a lot of risk here. And so uh, I just want to talk about some of the risks that we took. Um, one of them is uh, taxes. And I don't mean to say this is taxes are evil or a problem. It's just things to consider when you're trading. Uh, we will now owe short-term capital gains on our $1,000, which would be or less than $1,000, would be less than $200 in taxes. Now, this isn't necessarily a dent or something that should stop you from trying because anytime you owe capital gains tax, you still made profit. So that shouldn't be a concern. I know some people find that problematic, uh, but hey, you made profit, go ahead and take it. You, you're just gonna give Uncle Sam what they are gonna get. It doesn't really matter that much, you made money. Um, now, the risk that we took on overall, uh, we'll be able to roll this in our next trade. So we'll be paying taxes on it uh, at a later time. Um, unless the next trade closes out after the end of the year. Uh, so we'll see how this plays um, and rolls into our uh, following positions. Just a review on the Invesco QQQ NASDAQ ETF. Um, we've had a lot of quantitative easing and easy money policy that has pumped up prices. It has caused inflation directly into the speculative market as people have had the opportunity to invest. This isn't just an individual thing. Thanks. Big corporations, governments, retirement funds have been flowing money into the NASDAQ. Obviously, uh, the speculative play of both recovery from COVID as well as the understanding of where technology is leading us uh, has caused people to invest heavily into it. We've also seen the growth of things like uh, Tesla who have been added to the S&P 500 uh, due to growing so drastically that they, uh, they have affected many markets overall. Uh, so some of these have big players in them and that's why they move. Uh, but we've also seen some of the smaller players continue to carry some weight as they recover, especially in the tech sector. Now, as you can see from the trends that were previous, uh, the two yellow, the smaller triangles, we are up near their peak. And that's one of the reasons why we were taking profit today. Uh, sadly, the price ran up a bit more than what I, ex what I had uh, targeted for our 100% gain. So we could have made a little bit more, but I've learned not to be greedy uh, when making trades, hit your target and move on because your target was your safety net. If, you're, if you hit a dollar target, but you have a trade in front of you that still offers the same opportunity on the risk scale, then it's worth continuing. I would not say that we're exactly on the same risk opportunity. If we look at this chart here, we can see that we're either going to have to capitulate down to the purple, right? The purple triangles for the larger moves in order to continue on the trend, which means chopping sideways and that eats our time. And as you can see, this ascends uh, our, where we take our 100% profit. So it's better to take it as early as it comes and try to find the next trade rather than get caught in this chop. If it's one of these shorter areas, then we're already at the top here. Now the other scenarios to play out are what if we have a blow off top and we get outside of the tr uh, outside of the channel? Well, if we do move up rather quickly into here, we can identify that here and maybe take a new trade and move our 2000 into 4000 along this trend. Or we can identify that the momentum is going to come up here, retest and resume off of the channel. And then we're in a new paradigm of activity. We're outside of this channel and things are different. Um, and we're in a new trend. 
so I want to talk about the risk that we took. Uh, obviously, risk analysis is important, and um, this one's more of a gesture on risk. Uh, we took a $1,000 position. You can say I'm privileged that I would say $1,000 wouldn't be that big of a deal to lose, but the reality is, is many of us come across $1,000 that we very much lose the next day uh, doing something or having an incident occur. So putting $1,000 onto an investment that I would honestly call a little bit of a YOLO play, uh, not that this was far out the money call options, but uh, or reminiscent of the types of things you see on Wall Street bets. Uh, it wasn't the best position to start with. Uh, obviously, if you look here, it would have been better to have taken the breakout as we broke up here and then go uh, go on this uh, much more advanced momentum trade um, as the trend has shown us, but I didn't start the channel then. So once we got into here, I identified that we we're gonna t retest and we're sim similar to other trend resets we've seen before. So we're likely to continue on momentum. So I took this, came with a little bit of risk. The other thing to consider is that the additional risk that we took is that we took call options. Call options um, or any type of options trading uh, has a time decay to it. So it has a burn that continuously happens to your profits that makes it so that you have to have the price rise higher and higher or else you're going to collapse. And it has a deadline to be fulfilled or else you're going to have to try to choose to either just close the position uh, or you're going to have to take the 100 shares. Um, our $1,000 account is not going to take <laughs> it's not going to take 100 shares of the QQQ. So I would put us uh, squarely in the middle on our neutral and target versus target. Uh, that's less or our target is approximately half of our loss target is half of our uh, positive target. So our gain of 100% offset by a worst case scenario of about a 50%. Now, I did say 65% was our possible lowest sell point. If you go back to this chart, I set this trend line. This was the volatility range in which I was willing to endure in order to make it here. Now, taking this non-asymmetric bet, or not even symmetric bet, um, it's asymmetric to the downside, uh, would not be the best advisable position. But again, it was a $1,000 position. So I said, look, the trend is our friend. We're going to take this risk here because we can get started fast. And then we can start to learn how to manage our risk um, on a smaller scale uh, or on a larger scale down the road. On this end, it was, hey, this is our starting point. Let's see if we can double it. Let's prove that we can do this function and let's get started. Worst case, I throw another thousand dollars down. We turn that into a million dollars and we'll try and do it a little more methodically and adjust and uh, identify what we've done wrong. If I had taken a spot position, I would have had a pro approximate uh, eight percent gain possible and I could have set a negative target of like two percent now you're looking at a very good positive risk to reward ratio however uh, that's a very small margin to work with so we wanted to go more we wanted to go further out on the risk curve in order to get us our opportunity so we ended up taking call options here instead of a spot position here uh, eight percent isn't bad if you had taken eight percent on the year you beat the S&P 500 congratulations uh, you can now stop investing for one year. Um, but uh, the the opportunity was in front of us. We took it and it worked out in our favor. Uh, later on, we will try to review our risk chart before we execute the trade. And so what I want to talk about is where is the NASDAQ going next? And this is just if we can continue this trade, possibly getting up above that channel. So we see that this is the NASDAQ priced in the S&P 500, meaning Right here, this one line is one share of the NASDAQ buys one share of the S&P 500. We had the dot-com boom that caused the NASDAQ to become extremely overvalued compared to the compared to the S&P 500. The NASDAQ overvalued to the S&P 500. So it was like 3.4 shares of the NASDAQ could buy you, or one share of the NASDAQ could buy you 3.4 shares of the S&P 500, right? So we take the money or inflation out of the equation. These are two assets compared, which one's better to hold? When you broke above a trend that was moving up here, you should have taken the trade towards the NASDAQ. We got some chop here, but the NASDAQ obviously outperformed. Look at where we're at. We are in easy monetary policy starts, easy monetary policy starts. Technology being the future, technology being the future. These are the paradigms and narratives. There's not a huge difference between these except we have a massive amount of printing versus a very, very minor amount of easy monetary policy uh, through low interest rates. So this is uh, exceptional to, to say the least. Now, 
this doesn't have to break to the upside, and we should take that into account. But if there's a collapse, the S&P 500 outperforms the NASDAQ. If it goes sideways, the NASDAQ outperforms. If it, if it goes up, the NASDAQ outperforms. And that's what we want to be looking for if we're going to take a trade that goes above that channel. Otherwise, we'll be looking for the chop that brings us back down and puts us into a position to take advantage again. Here's the S&P 500. Remember to always check your chart on what you're looking at. We see our time scale and we are on log. Uh, so this is accounting for the multiples. But again, you see things that you might not see without uh, seeing on a logarithmic scale as things progress in multiples of themselves. So uh, you can see that a channel can last for a very long time, but once a breakout occurs, uh, it gets a little hectic um, channel going on for a while and then it breaks above. This failed because of the uh, 2007 um, housing market crisis that let, housing market crash that led to a crisis in uh, a global financial crisis in 2008-2009. So uh, we're up here. Can the S&P 500 crash? There are indicators for it, but it's not as a immediate radar concern at this point in time. We're still looking for the risk on trade. So we're still thinking positively in terms of where the Nasdaq is going next. And so that'll conclude the review of our uh, first trade. I'll be looking at multiple other places uh, to take profit and move us into our $4,000 price target. Uh, follow me on kobe.io to see me manage an active account. You can create your own account and you can earn credits in it uh, on uh, a crypto blockchain reward system. Uh, you do have to be pretty good at it, but let's say you're trying to manage your own portfolio. You don't have very much to work with and you wanna learn how to build a portfolio. You get to practice active management as opposed to passive management, or you can just test yourself on what is my passive management yield and how does this work? Where are my risks? Now you want to get more and more familiar with markets uh, as you go. So that's what the point of this class is, is to help you build those blocks uh, quickly. And uh, I am no expert. I am just looking to learn and I'm trying to bring as many people along with me. So enjoy the ride. I hope you took something from this uh, brief interruption to our regularly scheduled classes and have a nice day.